You're listening to the Fringianity Underground Podcast. Fringe topics with a Christian point of view. Now here's your host, Leo Rutledge. Today's episode is on the Denver International Airport and all the strange and kind of freaky things that seem to be surrounding it and within it. Artwork, statues occult imagery, Freemasonry, perhaps an underground base. All these strange things kind of all tie together surrounding this giant airport in Denver. So with that, let's begin the show. Google the words DIA conspiracy and there are 46,000 results. Many believe it's being used for government cover-up. And they point to the underground tunnels, the airport's art, and references to the New World Order's proof. But investigative reporter Heidi Hemmett went deep inside DIA where no TV crew or reporter has gone before. And Heidi joins us now, back from the our recesses of DIA. What's really going on over there? Well, there are so many conspiracy theories, Ron. DIA has been featured on several TV shows, including one starring Jesse Ventura. There are suspicions surrounding its location, underground tunnels, and the art that some say is a little scary. But tonight, airport officials are trying to debunk the myths by allowing our cameras inside the restricted areas to show what they're really hiding at DIA. It's where conspiracy theories are taking off. There's a lot of strange things about this airport. The secret signs and symbols inside DIA are the topic of TV shows. Strange symbols, hidden signs. Conspiracy theorists question its remote location. It's 25 miles from Denver. And massive size. It's twice the size of Manhattan. The airport's Masonic plaque that seems to recognize a new world order. New World Airport Commission? Yes. Who are they? What the hell is this? The mysterious murals. Things on fire and masked men stabbing doves. And the underground tunnels that many believe are secret bunkers built for a 2012 apocalypse. This is a place for the elites to escape. But now DIA is taking us behind closed doors, where no camera crew has gone before. Deep inside DIA's dark tunnels. Horror stories underground right now. Where conspiracy theories are born. Underground concentration camps, child labor camps, lizard people. To reveal what the tunnels are really hiding. It's all actually quite fun, um, but it's really just a baggage system. Miles of track that were supposed to be used for an automated baggage system that never worked. That's why hundreds of baggage handlers now race through this underground maze, delivering luggage from one plane to another. It's a lot safer to run these underground, not be around the airplane. DIA's Jeff Green admits it's an underground city. But if you see creatures from another world, (laughs) it's only the workers having a little fun. Green promises there are no hidden bunkers here. And you are showing us everything that's under. I'm showing you everything I possibly did that I'm that that I can find that I know is here. But he didn't sound very convincing. We are quickly escorted back up to the airport surface. There's an explanation for everything. Where DIA art director Matt Chazansky explains what the murals really mean. It's talking about the destruction of the environment, pollution, 
the um, endangered species, and even he saw the endangered cultures, the loss of cultural language and, uh, and of cultures around the world. He says the plaque marks the spot where a Masonic time capsule is buried. I wasn't there for the discussion about why that happened, but I know that that happens in a lot of buildings because the tradition of the Masons is as people who make buildings. And the New World Airport Commission was an advisory committee that was formed while DIA was being built. But for many conspiracy theorists, DIA's official explanation will land on deaf ears. They will always believe the airport is part of a government cover-up, fueling speculation that continues to climb a mile high. Conspiracy theorists say DIA's tunnels are six stories deep, but DIA says they're really only four stories deep, and that's where they took us. Now, as for the art, the artist says it depicts war, environmental destruction, and the world peace that he hopes will follow. But the artist's daughter says it's been hard to convince people who think otherwise. She says her father has actually received death threats from people over his art at DIA. It's been a lot of controversy. I know it. so many people can't stand the devil horse. Yeah, the I know. Blue devil horse yeah, with the red all, eyes. Did he, did he talk about that at all? Well, he just, that was, enough, that was something else altogether. But the conspiracy theorists say, yeah, why all this weird and strange yeah. and, and kind of scary art out here? And they say it's a whole map to this uh, 2012 apocalypse theory. It does make you question, yeah, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it doesn't look like any other yeah. airport, no, that's it does. for sure. It really does. <laughs> Heidi, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's so very funny. Everything's funny with these news people, I tell you. They really make a lot of jokes about uh, any kind of thought of, you know, that governments or whoever built this place, Freemasons, might have any secrets because there's no such thing as, you know, secret. You know, two people plotting a crime together in secret, that's considered conspiracy. But two people or more never get together, according to the media, and never plot in secret. No. No, people who rob you and know that you got money tucked away or whatever and get together and decide to break into your house, they're not plotting in secret against you because there's no such thing as conspiracies. There's never any kind of conspiracies out there. That's all just hogwash. That's insane. That's how they talk. I mean, this these people are brain dead. I mean... Yes, I understand that there's a million conspiracies out there about a million different things, and some of them go off on crazy nonsense, but some conspiracies have come true in the past, and they are very real, and there is fact to them. The thing is, is the word conspiracy theory was made up by the government or the CIA back in, what, was it the 60s or whatever? to make anybody who questions the story given by the government sound like a lunatic. And it works very well because the media uses it all the time to make you sound like you're insane. If you see a UFO, oh, you must be crazy. Well, let's see. Let's analyze UFO. Unidentified flying object. So if, if you are not able to identify a flying object that looks strange or might be a test plane that the government might be using somewhere or a triangle black plane or whatever flying over, well, then you're crazy for saying that. And then 20 years goes by and turns out that that was a test plane. So I guess you weren't so crazy. But your friends thought you were crazy because you seen a UFO because they equate UFO to flying saucers. Even though today people are watching ancient aliens and believing anything that says aliens created us. So what's stranger than fiction here? I mean, really. It just People in general are just dumbed down and don't think. They don't even think before they open their mouth. They're just like, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll just believe everything the government says. Okay, let me go to this indoctrination camp called college. And I'll just believe whatever the Democrats tell me. Because that's pretty much who seems to be pushing everything nowadays. But anyway, let's get back to the point here. The Denver International Airport is a very strange place. And it was built by Freemasons, according to its own little stone plaque or whatever thing that's, that they have there. But here's the thing. Why? Just let's, let's ask why, okay? Why would an airport put a giant statue 
of the pale horse from the Bible in the end times, out in front of the airport. Now, according to this news story, it's because of the world is having global warming or whatever, or the plants are being burned up, or whatever, in these pictures and murals that are in the airport. Okay, so the pale horse is something that you need to see when you go to an airport. So your whole art style around your whole airport needs to be focusing on um, death and destruction. That doesn't make any sense. So if, if a Freemason builds a hospital, do they put um, the Grim Reaper statue on the outside of the hospital? Because, well, that's the theme of the art here. And then have pictures of um, death and um, cancer patients dying on the inside of the building. Think about that. That's ridiculous. So why, why would we laugh at such a thing on the news? If, it, if the, this is making people uncomfortable, for one, when they take a flight, that the pale horse is right on the ground as they're taking off and they're looking down on this giant pale horse with red eyes, with nerves and veins popping out, it's all blue. I mean, really? And on top of this, they, as they're going through the airport, there's a suitcase with a demon coming out of it. I mean, a demon. It's like, really? I mean, straight up demon. So you, you can already see where the themes are going just from as you're entering or whatever. And then you get to these murals, these murals of women holding their children, their dead children, and whatever. And this guy or this Nazi looking gas mask wearing um, trench coat wearing creep with this sword that almost looks like the sword of Islam chopping at a, a, a dove, which means peace. So peace is being taken from the earth, just like in Revelation in the Bible. So he's killing peace. In other words, peace is being taken from the earth. And all these women are held, holding their children that are dead, it looks like. And it looks like some kind of like plague or some kind of um, airborne toxin or whatever killed. The, you know, it's really strange that there's no men in this picture either. I mean, you need to Google these pictures. Google the Denver airport conspiracy or something like that, and you will see pictures. You don't have to look for a conspiracy. Just look at the pictures. The pictures speak for themselves. I mean, it's insane. But I guess this is just an art style, according to the funny news that, you know, ha ha ha, it's a joke. That crazy conspiracy group of people, oh, Jesse Ventura covered this, so therefore it's a conspiracy, ha <laughs> ha. No, it's, what a, I just hate people who talk down to me like I'm unintelligent because I analyze something or research something, and I find that most of the times when I research stuff like government projects or whatever, I, I always find for some reason that the government is guilty because they were doing testing on people or something like that. Oh, but I'm crazy. I'm a conspiracy nut for talking about that, even though it's the truth. I'm a crazy conspiracy nut for talking about, you know, Project Paperclip where we brought the Nazis over and we wouldn't have NASA without the Nazis. Oh, that's conspiracy. No, that's fact. There's actual paperwork. So who's the crazy person here? Maybe it's the media who doesn't want...